Hey, everybody. By way of background, you know, I'm about seven years into Concero now, you know, having started here in a client facing role and progressed over time to be our COO. And now I'm our CFO. Um, prior to Concero, you know, I sat in the CFO or controller seat in several uh, VC and PE backed companies. Uh, in addition to doing uh, you know, big company travel consulting, as I like to call it, with Alvarez Marsal, where I focused on finance transformation projects. So, you know, with that background, you can imagine that when I came to Concero, FAS made a, you know, a ton of sense to me, you know, so much so that, you know, I was sitting in front of prospects and selling our services on the second day of the job. Uh, just the, the, the benefits of FAS just really kind of rolled, rolled off my tongue. Um, you know, what struck me then and still rings true today, I think, is that businesses south of 200 million in revenue and perhaps even some larger businesses, they'll just never make the investment in people, process, and technology to consistently build and maintain a fully competent in house FA team. You know, in the end, you end up relying a lot on the heroic efforts of, you know, a few individuals uh, on your team. Uh, and you know what else has emerged for me over time here is that FAS is the shortest and quickest path to executing a finance transformation project that would otherwise take several months, you know, perhaps with, with mixed results. Although having been in that business, I'd like to think that delivered great results to companies but you know some places we were there more than a year and you know when the bigger companies those were seven figure uh projects uh so you know it's uh, it's a big effort when you've got to go take over uh, an underperforming uh, uh function and i've found that our solution is a real uh nice way to to get after that but you know these are these are just my reflections and certainly again having been here for seven years now one could claim I'm a little biased uh, but you know we also wanted uh, to share today a study that you know a large consulting firm uh, prepared for us that I think confirms and amplifies what I what I just said uh, so if we could move ahead Allison thank you yeah, and we want to do that against the backdrop of the current uh, economic climate. You know, I think we've all seen uh, the impacts of this. You know, the bank failures that you know we've illustrated uh, here are the the most public. Uh, but you know, there's been a lot of other impacts that you know perhaps have been a little bit more subtle because they haven't really shown up in some of the you know the you know, the, the, the more well circulated macroeconomic statistics, you know, unemployment still low, inflation still high, and so forth. But, uh, you know, you go and look at it, PE deals are down 60% over the last year. Right. And I suspect a lot of uh, a lot of us are, are feeling that that are trying to go out to market, maybe trying to get some additional investment. And I expect a lot of our investors are telling us to hunker down, conserve cash, you know, hiring freezes, cutting costs, and so forth, that, you know, you just don't, you know, necessarily see every day other than, well, occasionally you see Facebook, you know, laying off a bunch of people. There are real impacts here. And so, you know, the question, you know, we want to get at today is, given a tough economic environment, given that, you know, SMB companies, you know, I think, struggle to, to build good in-house finance teams, you know, how can FAS be a benefit uh, to you? So let's go forward, Ellison, thank you. As, uh, as we mentioned, uh, you know, we've, we've, uh, we have this study, we've prepared a white paper based on it that will you know, feature all of the highlights, we'll circulate it after, uh, after this session. Let's go ahead and look into it then. So, you know, you go and see, you know, it's, it's pretty striking that you know, finance now is the, the, the most outsourced function behind IT. I, that caught me a little bit by surprise too, even having been in this uh, industry here uh, for a while. You know, everybody thinks, well, you know, why wouldn't it be, uh, you know, uh, you know, payroll, you know, which we don't count here. You know, you think in terms of you know the ADPs of the world and 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 so forth. Um, no, it's it's finance, and so you know, where does you know how did it get so big? You know, I think it's it's largely around you know the bigger companies. 
and then you know outsourcing you know their own internal finance groups and effectively making it a captive you know shared service you know an outsourced captive you know shared services group that you know they might you know go and offshore uh, and so forth. But you know what you have there is is you just have one group that's you know captive you know within you know that outsource provider that's providing those services you know to that particular company when you get into smaller companies and again smbs companies under 500 million uh in revenue even at that range you know they're going to struggle to invest in their own captive outsourcing and that's where companies like concero come into play okay because we're there, we're gonna make the technology investments, we're gonna make the process investments, you know, so that these companies uh, don't have to, you know, and, and further, you know, we're gonna manage the staff, you know, and anybody that's, you know, really invested in a robust, in a robust hiring process uh, knows how much, how time intensive, you know, that can be. And so if you're not having to hire you know, manage the ups and downs of your team and, and so forth, it can be a real time saver and, and let you focus more on, you know, what's what's really going on in your business. So let's go ahead and move forward. So, you know, in this environment, companies are looking, you know, where can they cut, you know, as, as we just talked about. They don't want to cut core capabilities. They don't want to get <laughs> cut back on sales. They don't want to cut back on development. You know, so they're going to come looking to the admin side of the house. You know, so how can finance leaders uh, contribute to that? You know, moving to FAS, as you'll see, is going to lower your costs pretty significantly. And, you know, as we're going to talk about, I think it also improves the performance of the function. So, you know, so let's look at sort of the different layers of, uh, of FAS here. You know, certainly you've got the tech, the technology. You know, FAS is more than just, you know, sending accounting out to a bookkeeper or a couple of people and having, you know, things get done on, on QuickBooks, right? You know, we're talking about, you know, good, you know, good solid, you know, mid-market ERP uh, systems, uh, you know, that, that are cloud-based. Uh, you know, that are going to give you, you know, the robust uh, reporting that, that you know, you're really looking for, right? You get all the transaction processing on top of it, and then you get controller support. And what I would go and tell you is, you know, at that level there, the technology, the transaction processing, the controller support, and with that, all of your, you know, financial statements, gap compliance, uh, audit support, and so forth, you know, that's that's sort of your minimum level of um, of FAS, and you know done well. This aspect of of F of F and A is you know it's virtually invisible. You know you think about I've, you know when I've supervised uh, accounting departments you know before, you know they always wonder well how come you know we never get brought up at company meetings. Everybody celebrates sales or celebrates you know, something that that happened in development, but nobody ever talks about finance. And I just tell them, well, you didn't get into this, you know, to go be out in front of everybody. If you're doing your job well, nobody notices, you know, when it comes right down to it. Um, they expect it to be done well. But when it when it isn't done well, you know, it does get outside, get outsized attention. And, you know, if you're, you know, inheriting something like that, or that's, you know, sort of happened within your team, you know, when things, you know, get, get a little bit out of shape, you know, it's really hard to fix it yourself. You know, you, you don't really get, you don't really have good system support. Um, you don't have the overhead to support, you know, the, yeah, and the time to support the process improvement. And, you know, you may be reluctant to make moves on people. You know, you've hired somebody, they've been there for years, um, you know, or, you know, they're just a, a single point of failure and you can't do much with them. All those things make it hard to go and, you know, fix what's going on in, in your finance uh, department. You know, FAS solves this for you, you know, solves this for you. And, you know, it really, it, it gives you, you know, kind of a single throat to choke when you've got issues. So, you know, let, let's talk about that a little bit, you know. We had um, we had a client uh, here with Concero. Uh, uh, CFO had had come in. He was new to the business. Uh, the company, you know, and this was you know a few years ago, but still was still running Peachtree. Okay, if anybody remembers Peachtree, uh, 
they you know, were having problems getting their audit done, and that was holding up getting uh, you know an important piece of, of bank financing done. He could have tried to have done it himself. He figured it was going to take him the better part of a year to do it and having to go change out people, hire them, you know, go through all, all the things you need to do to implement uh, a, a new system uh, and, and bring in, you know, new people and so forth. Um, he turned to us and, you know, we were able to uh, come in and, you know, not only did we bring a team of people that could sort of clean up some of the sins of the past uh, that he had, uh, you know, we were also able to, you know, design new processes, put in a modern system, and, you know, really within within three months, we had them up and running on a new system, new set of processes, delivering you know, accurate quality financial statements on time, and we had dug in and helped him solve his audit issues, got him his opinion, and then they were able to move forward and get their their financing done. So there's a lot of value add there, you know, for you know for that particular client, in you know in a very short uh, short period of time, you know. And yes, well, okay, well, how can all that be done in a short period of time? It's really because you know we're going to go implement. You know, very common processes again and again and again. And, you know, we or any other fast provider, you know, you're implementing those processes, you know, for you. So you're not really having to go and interview a bunch of people, whiteboard a bunch of stuff. You're coming in 80% baked, you know, to begin with and really just kind of fit, uh, you know, filling in the blanks. You're coming in with an idea of what's, you know, how does that chart of account work? chart of accounts going to work for that particular business? What's the reporting and KPIs that that company is going to need? So, you know, we've already got notions of what that needs to be uh, coming in. And that's why that's able to be done uh, so, you know, so quickly. You know, another uh, example, uh, you know, we were brought into uh, a software uh, company, pretty large software company, PE-backed, um, well over $100 million in, uh, in revenue, had made uh, in, uh, an investment in a particular system, and it ended up being a very uh, poorly done implementation. They weren't getting the accounting and reporting that they wanted out of it. Furthermore, he had a controller that, uh, uh, that was quitting and that had been kind of single-threaded and kind of knew where all the bodies were buried and so forth. That CFO made a decision to uh, to dump that system and 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 did so having made a five-year prepayment on the licensing fees it was it was working that bad uh, for him we we brought our solution in uh, we were able uh, again to support them on uh, on an interim basis within their current systems keep the accounting going there while we brought uh, our systems in and got them up and, and running. Uh, by the time all was said and all was said and done, we were doing some some very advanced accounting uh, for them uh, using you know some of the more advanced uh, modules, you know from uh, you know from the the cloud provider that we use. Uh, we were able to support them you know not only through an exit and then uh, you know the bank financing that went along with that exit, but then they got acquisitive and supported several you know, acquisitions on, on the backside. And this was all without them having to go and add, you know, anybody beyond, uh, you know, staff that they, you know, had been left with. You had a CFO, they kept, uh, you know, a VP finance in place and an fp &A person. And we did, we did everything else. We provided all of the, the detailed technical accounting that needed to be done to go and, and support uh, all of all of those transactions. So, you know, I think both of those are examples, and they're fairly complicated examples of the things that that FAS can can do for you. And I should point out, you know, again, in both of these circumstances, uh, these were um, uh, these were at a fraction of the cost. Um, you know, we've got FPNA and and CFO support here. Uh, as well, and you know these are these are things that uh, you know a fast provider can can also uh, provide. Uh, you know, in-house FPNA those are pretty special resources. A lot of times you're going to go out, you know, trying to pull analysts out of PE firms or investment bank houses and so forth. And so those folks coming in, they're not going to be cheap. 
they're going to be pricey and often you've got a single threaded resource that you're uh, depending on or sometimes it's a CFO doing it himself you know by getting this resource you know through FAS you're going to get a fractional resource obviously at a fractional cost and now some will complain that that well I need to have my guy you know there all the time uh, and complain about lack of full-time access. But I think what I've seen in, in how we deal with, with our uh, clients is that you know, we more than make up for perhaps you know, a little bit of lack of access with, um, you know, with the technical rigor you know, and the experience that comes with somebody that works with models you know, with several companies. And you know, they're gonna look at it, sit there and say, okay, for uh, you know, a, SaaS, a SaaS company, you know, they're, there could be several different ways you can model revenue, and and you know we have templates for each you know that we're going to go and uh, and start from, and certainly you know we're going to have you know the KPIs built in. We know what they are. We know how to compute them. We know how to manage them. You know it's not something that that you know we've got to go and, and figure out. So you know FPNA you know can be a solution for for uh, you know for some companies, especially ones that are a little bit on the, the smaller side and aren't going to you know go and support a, a full time FPNA person you know and keep them engaged. You know on the the CFO side, um, you know I think some of the smaller companies again can get away with a fractional uh, CFO, and I think uh, you know here you know using you know somebody you know from uh, from your fast provider staff, or you know, like I said, for from our staff, uh, they know how the fast model works, and you know that's going to go a lot smoother. They're going to, you know, be able to do things on on behalf of uh, of the company uh, that others won't won't have to go do, and and they'll be able to do it in, in a more uh, efficient manner. You know, the other thing you get with them is, you know, you're getting the, the benefit of, you know, they're also serving several companies. They're seeing what other companies are doing. If some other companies going through a transaction, they're going to see, well, what happened in that? What were the valuations? You know, what were some of, uh, uh, you know, the, the sticking points in, in due diligence and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and, and so that, that can be a big help. We, we had one of our uh, uh, CFOs, uh, really almost step into, well, let's call it about a, a two thirds, three quarters time role uh, when that company decided to, to go out for a liquidity event. And so he was was in there right, uh, right from the start on going through the process, working with the bankers, building up the, the due diligence materials, and then ultimately working through, uh, you know, the, the term sheets and negotiations and, and, and sales. And that worked out, you know, very well for uh, the, the company. You know, the nice thing about it was they didn't have to have a full-time person there that also was going to go and consume equity. You know, they were able to do it, uh, you know, with our person at, uh, you know, at a lower cost, uh, granted, you know, CFOs aren't cheap, uh, but still a lower cost, didn't impact the equity, and, you know, they had the, the technical capability to do it. Not everybody that's sitting in a CFO role has done deals. You know, the people that we're going to bring have done deals, and they've done a bunch of them, and so they're going to be, they're going to be practiced at it. Okay, let's go ahead and move, uh, move forward. So, you know, when you when you look at the the study, you know the the study cited the the technology that we bring, and I kind of mentioned that in the beginning. You know, smaller companies just aren't going to make big investments in financial technology. You know, whereas you know we're we're able to lay you know uh, leverage you know these investments over all of our client base. You know, we're going to automate uh, processes through uh, RPA. You know, we've brought uh, machine learning to. Uh, uh, you know, to our, our analytics, as far as, you know, looking at monthly, uh, you know, variance analysis and so forth, it, it cuts a lot of the time out of what it takes to go and put, uh, you know, and, and put, you know, that type of analysis uh, together. And then, you know, we have our workflows and, and, you know, we think, you know, we can move data around and move reports around in a, in a pretty efficient manner. And again, that's just not somebody, something that most companies, you know, spend, uh, spend, spend time on. So, you know, you look at the benefits of, of FAS, uh, you know, you know, I think what we, we called out here was uh, we went to, to chat 
uh, GPT and, and ask, hey, hey, chat, what, uh, you know, what are the benefits of FAS? And, and this is, you know, this is sort of what came back and it's, you know, reflective of a lot of the same things that are, that are here in, uh, in the study. You know, you look at improved efficiency, you know, think about it, you know, a company like Concero is processing tens of thousands of transactions a month, you know, on the same systems, you know, usually mostly common processes, you know, not going to claim that everything we do is perfect, but all that practice certainly makes more perfect. Um, you know, the expertise, you think about our staff, we have thousands of years, think about it, thousands of years of controller or CFO or director of finance experience across a broad range of industries, a broad range of technical accounting issues and a broad range of complex financial uh, transactions. You don't get that in any one person or in any one small dedicated staff uh, you know, that, that you might hire into a company. You know, scalability. Um, you know, I spent some time in, in the storage industry once, once upon a time. And, you know, we were trying to solve the storage, the storage problem in, very, in a very similar way in that, you know, Concero solves the scalability uh, problem, right? You know, in, in, in storage, you start running out of space and you've got to buy a new server. So you end up with this, you know, this uh, staircase, you know, of, uh, you know, of investments. And, you know, so you buy the new server, it takes a while to go and, and absorb that. Meanwhile, you're paying for the full capability there. It's the same thing with, with people. You, you, you know, if you've got an accounts payable team, for example, and, you know, you start running into capacity issues, you've got to go hire somebody else, you know, it's hard to get them part-time. You're going to hire somebody full-time. So now you've got a full-time person there, even though you may only have them 25 to 30% utilized uh, to start. You know, Concero, you know, we have a team of people doing accounts payable. You know, we're able to, uh, you know, take on, you know, some of the increases in volume just you know, by using fractions of, uh, of those people because, you know, we're able to layer people across, you know, several, you know, several clients. And so, you know, you really get the, the scalability that you can't get there on your own and it helps smooth out, uh, you know, your, your costs. Um, you, know, you focus on their core competencies. You know, we've talked about uh, talked about some of this, you know, you're able to focus on what's going to drive value for your business. Yeah, I'll maintain, I'm a career finance guy, you know, finance done well maintains value in a business, right? I don't think it adds value to it. Having a Cracker Jack finance function doesn't go and increase your, increase your multiples, but not done well can erode value, you know, especially if, you know, that doesn't show well in, you know, in a due diligence uh, situation. So, you know, you bring in FAS, you rely on FAS to, to support you, bring a fully functioning, uh, you know, function, you know, finance function. Um, you don't have to manage it every hour of every day. You know, it's working well for you. You know, it's not going to take value away. It's going to help you maintain value. It's going to help you focus on the things that add value to the business. Um, Finally, cost savings, you know, as, uh, as you'll see here in a, in a minute, typically we're going to be one third less than it costs to go and, you know, have the systems and a full staff, you know, in, in house. So let's go ahead and move forward. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you're probably familiar with the, the Hackett uh, group, you know, pretty renowned uh, consulting firm, you know, in the, uh, you know, the financial uh, industry. You know, now this is, these are big numbers, right? A $10 billion company, they can sell, you know, save $51 million, uh, you know, in costs. Um, you know, think of it this way. That's a half point. That's a half point of EBITDA. You know, apply that to your EBITDA multiples and see what that's worth to you. I mean, it's a cost savings. You can redistribute the cost, you know, you know towards other things, or you can keep it and get the enterprise value for it. So there's different ways sort of to do your math and derive value from the economics of, uh, of FAS. So, you know, we, we had a, a, a client, a multi-location um, uh, health, healthcare company, you know, 
honestly, we we mostly do technology, but you know, we also we also do pretty well with uh, you know some of these uh, you know medical clinics and, and things uh, things to that effect. So you know, they came to us. Again, it was one of those uh, things where, um, you know, it was a COO that was running finance, had a few staff, people wasn't really getting uh, what uh, what he needed uh, out of it. So, you know, we came in with a proposal, uh, you know, to uh, uh, support them with, you know, fractional CFO, you know, county manager and, and so forth, the full tech stack, um, you know cost something to implement it right up front, you know, it's about $30,000. But, you know, when you go and, uh, and look at it year over year, you get past the first year investment, which again, is just, it's, it's a fraction. Think about, think about what it costs to put in a new system. You know, you go direct to a VAR and go implement one of these cloud-based systems, you're going to be into six figures. Okay, plain and simple, because that's their only business. We're able to do that again because we're 80% implemented when we start. So it's a smaller lift uh, for us. You know, plus, you know, we want to get in. That's not where, you know, where our business is at. Our business is serving companies month in, month out, you know, doing great uh, finance work uh, for them. Uh, but you know, what you what you see here again is that we basically, you know, saved this company one one third. And, you know, I would say uh, uh, about them, uh, you know, they did uh, they did go through uh, an exit. Uh, we were, uh, uh, you know, very integral to that exit process. We showed well in the process. We always show well in these due diligence processes is one of those things that we just could consistently graded uh, highly on. And, and the same is true uh, for uh, for audits. So, you know, that's COO, he's a fan, uh, he's a reference, uh, and, you know, he ended up making a fair amount of money. So good for him. Uh, go ahead and move to the next uh, slide. Uh, another CFO, uh, Steve Isom, you know, we've actually taken him through, uh, through two exits um, and, and, you know, so he's, he's brought us in uh, multiple times and, you know, has nothing but, again, but good things to say, uh, not just about our, our day to day service, but about how we get them through the exits and, you know, what makes it, what makes it good, what makes a difference, um, you know, it's a digital process. I would imagine today that most companies have gone digital, but it could be that there's some that are out there that still have paper files and, and so forth, but we're entirely digital. You know, we've got documented uh, processes. We do hard closes monthly. That's a fully reconciled balance sheet, all the reporting. We're audit ready at any given point in time. So it's not a, you know, we're not running around. Somebody comes and says, "Hey, we're going into uh, we're going into deal mode." It doesn't take us three months to get ready. We're ready to go, and and that uh, you know being able to move uh, quickly is uh, you know is paramount, as you know, in in trying to get uh, get these deals done. You know, plus we've done a bunch of these. You know, you go look around. How many CFOs again in finance departments have actually been through a sale transaction? You know, not many. You know, and maybe they've been through one. You know, our teams have been through several. So we know what to do. We know how to respond. And, you know, again, we're, we're able to go and, and support people on a very timely basis. You know, we don't mention it really here. Uh, the FAST platform is also a great platform for acquisitions. So if if your company is, is that acquisition platform and, you know, you're going to go and buy a few companies a year, you know, it's just another implementation for us. And we go and bolt it on to a system that's already in place, processes already in place, and, and people, you know, that are there to, to do the transaction uh, processing. You don't need to keep an integration team on hand to go and do it. So it really reduces the costs of you know doing the acquisitions and then ultimately doing the, the integration. So, you know, what are our takeaways here, right? Tough economic environments require top performance from your finance function. You know, they also require tough decisions on costs. You know, implementing FAS, you know, it, you can sit there and say, why do I want to take that uh, take this risk now? Uh, you know, we just went through it. You're going to get a better performing finance function. You're going to reduce your cost of finance. Uh, you know, 
you're going to be able to serve your company, uh, you know, through through these tough times, you know, in a much better way, and you will have made that contribution not only to the value but also to you know conserving cash, reducing costs, all the things that we're challenged with here in um, in these environments. So, Allison, that's uh, that's what I wanted to to cover today. Um, we've got time for questions. So, what do we have? Yeah, we had a couple come in so far. So uh, the first question, what are best practices in working with FAS to make sure it's a successful partnership? Right. Um, and, you know, you used a key word there, Allison, and that's and that's partnership, right? I think, you know, what I've seen, the the, the companies that have worked best with Concero, they, they treat their team as their own and not as just some other uh, vendor. Um, uh, you know, I uh, what 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 I've seen is you know the, the ones that are really good. You know, you know if if they've had, had to ask the team to go and and stay late to get through you know some deadline or this that and the other, well they'll turn around and buy them lunch. You know, I've seen companies you know send company swag you know to um, you know to uh, their their teams. So all that goes a, a long way towards you know getting your team you know bought in and and serving you. Uh, you know, because, you know, they, they want to make you look good and they want to serve the, the company because they know that they're, they're valued. So I think that's, that's one piece. You know, the second piece is, you know, I would say that, you know, just recognize that just because you've outsourced your finance team, you've put it into to FAS, it's not <clears throat> totally out of sight and out of mind. You know, it still requires some effort to manage it, to manage it, and you should expect, <laughs> excuse me, to to make that effort. Now, finally, you know, you still have to go through the onboarding and the implementation. It does take a solid upfront effort to get it right. So don't don't under underestimate that. Expect expect to put some hours in. You know, in the first you know, two, three months, you know, to get it right, to help your team learn uh, the ins and outs of your business so that, you know, you know, as they get into, you know, month four, month five, they can be a lot more self-sufficient. But, you know, expect to make that effort uh, up front and, and make it. Hey, thank you. Um, and the next one is, are there any uh, specific industries or sectors that can benefit more from FAS than others? Well, you know, as I mentioned a little bit during, uh, you know, during the, the, the presentation here, I, you know, Concero, for one, focuses a lot on, on tech companies and read that as, as software and services. Um, you know, we also, again, as I mentioned, you know, do pretty well with, you know, these, uh, uh, you know, multi-location uh, healthcare enterprises of, of different, uh, of, of different types, right? You know, things that are a little bit more, um, you know, sort of, you know, less product intensive, more service, you know, or less tangible product intensive, I would say. And less, less service intensive. I think when you, when you get into some of the hardcore manufacturing, uh, and you've got, you know, factories and machines and people and so forth, that's harder to do from far away. Um, I I suspect we'll figure out ways to conquer that eventually, but you know, for now, you know, the cost accounting and all that that goes with it, it's really integral to the operations and. I, you know, having lived in that environment once upon a time, I found it helpful to be able to, you know, go go walk out into the factory or spend time with the head of operations uh, and so forth. So things like that are probably a little less conducive today. But you know, my guess is is that over time we'll start figuring out how to how to do that. Great. And then this next question actually goes along with the last one a little bit. Uh, what is the typical company size Concero works with? Right. So the typical size, you know, for us pretty much runs, you know, 10 to $50 million in revenue. So if you think back to that stack of services from technology on down, uh, taking that all the way through the CFO is, is a good fit there within that range. 
you start getting north of the 50 million, you're probably going to have a full-time CFO. You don't get too much further before you probably have full-time FP&A, but we can still go and do all that controller work, all the reporting work uh, down below. We, we have uh, companies that you know, are as large as eh, half billion dollars. All right, but I would say the sweet spots, the 10 to, the 10 to 50. And yeah. Great. Um, and then can FAST be customized to fit the specific needs and requirements of an organization? Yeah, yes, um, but let's, you know, but let's, um, let's think through that as, you know, what does customized uh, mean, right? I mean, uh, you know, software companies are software companies, you know, you, you have to look at their revenue model and adapt the revenue model. So when you say customize, you know, I've got an invoice, but it may be that, you know, we're heavy on services and we've got to do a lot of time and materials invoices. We've got processes for that to the extent that a company is, you know, doing, you know, a high volume of say credit card transactions, you know, through, um, you know, something like, I don't know, uh, square or something to that effect, you know, then we'll adjust to that. You know, we're not going to go take that in our systems. Fine. Leave it there. We'll just ingest that, you know, that in mass, you know, in, into the system. So, you know, we do make adjustments, you know, mostly around what's, what's the revenue model and what, you know, what do you need to do to be able to serve that? You know, I think we, uh, we try to be uh, a little bit more standard around how we manage, uh, you know, manage our payables, um, you know, we try to be prescriptive around the reporting. Again, you know, we do we do concentrate in a few industries. We have a pretty good sense for what you know uh, investors want to see in reporting out of their companies. And so, you know, we'll come and say, "Here's what we think you should do." But again, you know, one of the first things we do with the companies is sit down and say, "What do you want to see out of your reporting?" And so, we do take that input in and and then work. Uh, you know, our onboarding around that. Great. And I think we have time for one more question. So the last one is, uh, which ERP platforms does Consero utilize within its platform? Right. So, yeah, the ERP platform that uh, that we use is Intact uh, by, uh, that's provided by Sage. Uh, we do that across the majority of our clients. Uh, you know, we do have uh, a few clients on uh, on NetSuite, but that is not something that um, you know we're doing broadly yet. You know, we have a lot of expertise in Intact, and we feel that it serves uh, you know our our core industries you know pretty well. Great, thank you. So I'll go to the last slide um, just to wrap us up. Thank you, Mike. Uh, appreciate your time today.